Hello, hello, my darlings. My dedicated and loyal listenership to the Death Metal Disco podcast. I bid you good day. I hope that you are all doing, uh, splendidly. It is currently Valentine's Day weekend as I am recording this, and I am, uh, if you know me, not at all even a little bit a fan of the Valentine's Day. And maybe I'm just bitter and jaded and lonely. That's a possibility. I'll, I'll admit that those are all likely possibilities for my uh, frame of mind. But I also just hate that it's so commercialized. And, you know, the same could be said about Christmas and whatever. But really, Valentine's Day is the, is the holiday that uh, sucks the life out of me. And I don't know if you were, if you're able to hear it. It is a uh, there's a lot of room noise, um, background noise, low rumble because everybody's fucking furnaces are on. Because here in Colorado this weekend it is currently uh, when I looked at my phone last uh, two degrees, two degrees at my house. It was uh, oh just kidding, it's negative one. Uh, yeah, it was negative eight this morning when I woke up. Um, so that's fun. It was nice and sunny. All day. Uh, Just fucking cold. Super cold, which I don't mind the cold, but if, uh, you know, if you're out and about, it makes things interesting. So everybody's got their goddamn furnaces on, including me. Mine's currently off because it's uh, even extra noisier when I have it running if I'm trying to record. So, yeah, it's off. And uh, in my living room, it's not isolated enough to stay away from the outside rumble of like the heater that is in uh on my balcony in a closet that's on the balcony it's got a heater on there and I think that's what I'm hearing is the heater for the water heater tank um keeping it from freezing so hopefully hopefully I can get that out but if I can't I'm sorry um it is what it is anyway um so this here episode is the 10th episode of the Death Metal Disco podcast. The actual 10th, unlike the 9th episode where I thought it was the 10th and I went on this whole big thing about the 10th episode and blah, 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 only to discover that I'm stupid and it's a- that was actually the 9th. So uh, this is the 10th episode. And granted, I started it in November. I've skipped a couple weeks. In fact, last week I did not have an episode because I uh, didn't really plan out my time very well and then I got lazy and didn't... Uh, just decided I'm just going to take a break for a week. I didn't really have anything fun to add, so it seemed seemed to work out. I don't necessarily know if I have anything good to talk about in this episode, so it's kind of a bummer for me. Um, lack of planning. My head's just not been in the right space for a while. Some of my astrologically inclined friends might say, oh, that's the Mercury, Mercury retrograde, and I might say, okay, whatever. Um, I don't necessarily buy into all that, but I don't discount it either. If that's what it is, that's what it is. I, who am I to say? I really don't know. All I know is that my head has been, uh, um, probably in the clouds more than usual. And I don't know why. And, uh, it's often in the clouds. Um, I'm a realist, but I'd, I'd be lying if I said I didn't daydream about shit a lot. So, whatever. Here we are. Anyway, episode number 10. And uh, the fact that I made it this far is astounding. I'd like to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for listening. Um, If you checked out any episode, any part of an episode, even if it's just that introductory five-minute trailer thing I did way back in the beginning of November, um, if you check that out, uh, even that... Fuck yeah, man. Thank you. Or ladies, whoever you are. If you are a uh, dedicated listener and listen to a new episode every week, I do occasionally get messages from people asking if I am posting an episode for a week, like last week, uh, if I miss one or if it's delayed or whatever. Um, People will hit me up, and that's kind of nice. You know, it makes me feel like, other than the fact that people are listening, it makes me feel like people kind of look forward to it. And that's pretty cool. Um, Unexpected, honestly. But cool nonetheless. So given that uh, this is episode 10, I just wanted to do a thank you. Um, 
the only way that really came to mind. I don't know how I could really give a thank you to everybody individually that has listened to the podcast uh, or shared the podcast or any of that stuff, anything related to the podcast. If you've interacted with it, you know, retweeted, fucking anything, liked a post for the podcast, I fucking thank you. And in order to actually do a thank you, I wanted to do it properly. And for that, I went to the internet. And the internet showed me that uh, what a lot of channels, like YouTube channels and other podcasts and stuff, what they might do for some of their subscribers and listenership is they'll do a giveaway, a contest of some kind. And so I decided I'm going to do one. It's a small one because let's be honest, not really rolling the dough here, uh, you know, still out of pocket and that's all good. But something just to, you know, give people a chance to uh, win a win a prize um, that I will supply and, you know, treat it as a thank you, a thank you for listening. And uh, I'm going to have details on that at the end of this podcast. So listen to that. And I'm not saying that just so you listen to the whole podcast, because I mean, really, you could just skip to the end if you want to. Um but I just want you to know that I'm going to do a podcast. I will include the details of that in this episode. And then I will also have uh, individual social media posts about it. So you'll know exactly how to enter and what uh, what to expect in the event you don't listen to this episode. So that's what's going to happen. But I didn't, you know, as I normally don't, have anything planned to talk about um, last weekend. Uh, I went the weekend I actually skipped recording an episode, which would have been episode 10. I went out to dinner with some friends, my friend Addy and Nick. And I've mentioned them on the podcast before. Addy and I go way back, and Nick and I now also go pretty way back, almost as far back as Addy and I do. But um, they've been married for a long time now, and uh, uh, I've known them, and they're good friends to me, and I love them dearly. And we occasionally try to get together and have dinner. Usually Ted's Montana Grill, or if you're a Denver person, the uh, the Brutal Poodle on Broadway, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. And no, this is not a sponsored ad for them. Uh, they didn't tell me to say anything. I didn't mention to them that I would be saying anything about the Brutal Poodle. But the Brutal Poodle is fucking fantastic. I've known the owner of the Brutal Poodle. Uh, for quite a long time as well, back from when I was in the Mandrake and even, I think, maybe Misanthrope. Uh, Ryan, I've known him for a long time. We, we're not super close or anything, but I knew him through the music scene. He's a drummer. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I ever played shows with any of his bands, but we would see each other a lot and be at shows all the time because you just recognize people. You start talking to people, especially if they're in bands. You just, that's how it goes. Anybody that's in a band or has been in a band knows that. They opened the Brutal Poodle, I don't know exactly how long ago. It's been, it's got to be at least five years. I probably should have looked that up before I started talking about it, but I didn't because, God forbid, I actually do research before I start blabbing about something on this fucking podcast. Anyway, the Brutal Poodle, it's on South Broadway, about Broadway in Jewel, I believe. Um, Broadway in Evans-ish, right next to Angelo's, uh, South Denver, so... If you're in the Denver area or Colorado and you make it to Denver, uh, you need to go buy some music at Angelo's and then stop over at the Brutal Poodle for some food and drink. And their food is fucking amazing. I've, they have a huge menu, um, different things. They even have pho, and I love pho. I have yet to try their pho because I always get something else that, you know, they do uh, weekly or bi-weekly specials on things, like new creations that they'll have for a limited time. And those have uh, not disappointed at all. In fact, the one they just had when we were there was the, uh, they called it the Slaw Phallic Carnage, based on the band Cephalic Carnage. That's how they name their specials, is uh, names of bands, and they'll do a whole backstory about the band, and then what the food actually is. And this one was a uh, pastrami burger, and it was fantastic. And if you just go to their social media, you'll see pictures of it. It was fucking amazing. And they have sweet potato tater tots, which are basically heaven. So, yeah. And they make good drinks. And the staff is friendly. It's just a cool vibe. Um, especially if you're a metalhead uh, of any kind. Uh, there's a lot of people that go there that aren't metalheads. But, you know, 
it's not totally metal decorated or anything, but the jukebox, you know, the music is is metal generally. Um, but it's just a fucking cool place, cool people, and fucking great food. So this is my uh, personal unpaid endorsement of the Brutal Poodle. And there's a couple other places around town. Uh, eventually I'll talk about I have to go back to them at some point, so need to make that happen. Um, getting out is hard to do these days. So anyway, uh, went to dinner with Addie and Nick. Um, it's not a very close place to me. I live in southeast Aurora in fucking suburbia, and it's a it's a good half hour drive to get there, but it's totally fucking worth it. So if you're in town, go to the goddamn Brutal Poodle. Couldn't recommend it enough. Um, I wanted really just to mention just that I was able to hang out with some friends and... Uh, technically I am one of those who has underlying conditions. I have the diabetes, the diabetes or the sugars as some lovely Southern ladies said it to me once when I told them I had it. Um, and according to my cousin who is a nurse at a hospital in Denver, uh, who actually treats COVID patients, she said that diabetes is probably the number one uh, underlying condition that really, 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 really amplifies the COVID shit, which I figured was kind of the case, but I never really looked into it. Um, I got a buddy who's diabetic. He got, he got sick and, uh, he was on the ventilator for like 10 days, had to go to rehab for a couple weeks after he came off the ventilator, uh, to learn how to walk again. And that's kind of terrifying. He's older than me too, but not by much, uh, well, maybe 10 years. So he's 50 ish. I don't know for sure, but anyway, going out and being social, even with the distancing protocols and all that is a risky situation really for anybody, but especially if you have underlying conditions or if you go to hang out with other people who also have underlying conditions or are old or, you know, just fragile immune systems for whatever reason anyway. Um, but you know, it can be done. And between, between the, uh, the work travel I've done and the occasional socializing that I've done, uh, so far so good. And granted you could say that all the time until it's not good anymore, but, um, it's, it's just nice. Like in my opinion, if, uh, if getting out and being in person with people that you care about, that you love, um, if you're able to and able to do it reasonably safely, Uh, I think you should, um, don't, don't go crazy. Don't be an idiot about it, but it's just good to see people in person. Humans are social creatures by nature. Uh, and people are struggling with the lonesomeness and solitude of the isolation. And yeah, doing like zoom calls with each other and talking on the phone and this, that, and the other playing, you know, I'd mentioned it playing games and talking to the people you play games with. That's all fine and good. But really, you know, nothing beats personal interaction. And uh, for me, and I'm not saying, you know, if you if you don't want to, don't. You know, that's fine. I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other or say things aren't or are what they are. I'm just saying, you know, if you really want, if you really need to see your friends, make sure everybody's doing their part and then make it fucking happen. Like, it's probably going to be better off for you that way if you do. Uh, maybe, you know, I don't want to say that and then be held responsible. So I'm not a professional. Don't take this shit as advice, uh, of any kind of professional advice, but, uh, I'm just saying, you know, if you, if you really could use some human interaction, uh, maybe try going out and safely doing it with people who are also, you know, if you know that they're taking care of it on their end, and they're not being ridiculous about how they're handling their business, uh, you should give it a shot. Um, You know, that's my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. But anyway, hanging out with Addie and Nick. It was a much needed evening. We haven't gotten together since probably, I want to say it was summertime. It was July, August maybe. And we went to Brutal Poodle that time. And... Uh, I be- we sat on the balcony, so it couldn't have been cold. Maybe it was a little bit, but it wasn't that cold. I can't remember. Everything's a blur. But anyway, we got together and we had dinner, and then we went back to their house and hung out. 
listened to music, told stories of the past. For those of you who don't know, Addie and I were in the Mandrake together back in uh, 2005 and 2006. And before that, she was the original bass player in my first band, Misanthrope. Uh, we also went to high school together, um, briefly. I was only there for a semester and she was there the whole time, I'm pretty sure. And we were in band together. I played the tuba, she played the flute. We didn't talk. Um, I didn't really talk to anybody in high school anyway when I went to that school, but, uh, uh, yeah, she was always very interesting to me. And then eventually we found each other afterwards and became friends and blah, blah, blah. But anyway... Addie is a teacher, and I think it's safe to say no professions that have had to cope with the uh, the switch from in-person to working from home situations, none of them have had to do it quite the way teachers have. Everybody's had to make changes. Um, I've been, I mean, ever since I took my current job, I've been working home uh, for four years, over four years. Um, mostly if I'm not traveling, I'm working from home, occasionally would have to drive to an office, but I mean, most of the time working from home. So this was nothing new to me, but you know, and you know, a lot of people in businesses, uh, office environments and stuff like that, they probably already had the ability to work from home, but not necessarily ever were enabled to do so. But teachers, um, probably never, ever thought working from home was a thing they would be doing unless they've done, you know, uh, outside the classroom tutoring over the summer or some crap like that, or just as a, as a side gig, um, working from home for teachers was probably not high on their list of things they ever thought they'd be doing and probably not what they want to be doing. I don't know any teachers who teach because they'd like to work from home and teach people remotely. Um, the teachers that I do know, and I do know a few, they love interacting with the kids, the students in person, and that makes sense. I mean, you have to be a special person to want to be a teacher. I uh, I don't mind kids, but classrooms full of kids, that, uh, that ranks really low on my list of things that I'd want to do in my life. And teachers don't get paid enough. Everybody knows that, except the people who uh, determine how much they get paid, so... That needs to be figured out. But Addie, uh, we were talking, she's doing now, it's hybrid learning, but it's hybrid for the students. So some of them come into classroom, some of them stay home, and she has to go into the classroom to teach the ones that are there in person, but also has her laptop in front of her with her camera, so she's working with the ones who are remote. And she said she has to walk around the classroom uh, with her laptop a lot because she's handling the in-person shit as well. And that seems like it's even harder than just doing one or the other. And, uh, you know, tip of, tip of the hat to her. I don't wear hats. I don't know why I use that phrase, but, um, yeah, that's, uh, she teaches second grade. I cannot imagine teaching elementary school age kids remotely and expecting anything good to come of it as far as, uh, material retention or anything. That seems hellish to me. I often have to train adults and teach adults, uh, adults who are generally supposed to be pr pretty smart. I have to work with them remotely a lot, and the amount of shit that they don't retain is astounding. So trying to teach kids who uh, have the attention span of goldfish these days uh, without being there in person and being able to make sure they're at their desk and doing what you're saying they're doing, that sounds fucking awful. So, Addie, anybody else who's a teacher, I fucking love you. Mad props to you, and good luck. I hope you're all not raging alcoholics by now, because I imagine, uh, I imagine it would be easy to slip into that. So, anyway, that's my story about going to the brutal poodle. <laughs> fucking stupid. I'm so dumb. I don't know why you guys listen to this, but I'm glad you do. So that was my weekend last weekend. Went out to dinner with them, went back to their house, hung out, had a grand time. It's good to see people that you haven't seen in a while. You know, when you start getting older, you don't get to hang out with all of your friends all the time. And uh, that can that can wear on you. And you're like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe we'll see each other at concerts or whatever. But then 
that doesn't happen either because they just don't go to concerts anymore, hardly ever, or because 2020 happens and uh, everything canceled. So it's good to hang out with them. And on a similar note, on Friday night, just this past Friday night, uh, my buddy Jamie and Chris and I met up at Jamie's house and we watched The Last Drive-In on Shudder with Joe Bob, The Last Drive-In on with uh, Joe Bob, The Last Drive-In. One of these days I'll get the fucking title right. The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs on Shudder. Not an advertisement. Um, but it's awesome. Especially if you remember Joe Bob as a kid. And I sort of do. We didn't have cable growing up most of the time. So I didn't get to experience very much of that in my youth. Except for the occasional friend's house. But um, Joe Bob is amazing. And <laughs> the fucking movies. Oh my god. So it's a horror-related thing, if you don't know. If you're a horror movie person, uh, first of all, if you're a horror movie fan and you don't have Shudder, you should probably just get Shudder. It's inexpensive, and they have a crazy huge variety. And if you can't find it on Netflix or Amazon or Hulu or whatever, you can probably find your horror movie on Shudder. Um, they, they do a good job of curating stuff, but the commentary that Joe Bob comes with and brings to a screening of something is fucking hilarious. The guy is witty, and I'm sure he has ideas, but, I mean, just his off-the-cuff banter about stuff and uh, tangential stories is fucking phenomenal. And we got to see him in person a couple years ago at the Telluride Horror Show. Uh, him and Darcy, the Darcy the male girl, that's his co-host slash assistant, slash uh, she's also... a uh, I think she's a former porn star or whatever. I don't know. Um, they came to Telluride and did this whole thing about uh, rednecks in horror or rednecks in film. And it was it was fantastic. It was a really, really good way to spend a couple of hours if you're not seeing an actual movie. Hearing him talk about how the redneck industry or redneck lifestyle uh, shaped and embedded itself in cinema was amazing. And if I could remember the name of the actual, uh, what that program was called that, you know, that was booked that way. Cause he does it. He does it at other festivals and stuff too. I would certainly pimp that out, but I can't remember the fucking name of it. And I apologize. But anyway, on Joe Bob on the last drive in on Friday night, uh, it was a two movie screening. One of which was called the love witch. And I'm still not sure if I liked it was a little long, um, a little weird, kind of an experience. It had some very beautiful uh, cinematography, photography shots filmed on 35 millimeter, and it was visually a throwback to the 60s, the old school classic movies, and Hitchcock for sure. And uh, it was, in that regard, amazing. There were some parts that... Uh, I think could have been cut out. Uh, but I mean, really it's worth a watch if you're into just weird, interesting, very pretty movies. The use of color was fantastic. Um, and it, it, you know, if you look at the trailer, it looks like an old school movie, but it's really not. It was released in 2017 or 2018. It's relatively recent and it's shot, you know, like the classic films, the lighting and everything. It was really well done in that regard. And it was an interesting story, um, talking about Wiccanism, sort of, uh, not really Wiccanism, but definitely the pagan dark arts and such, if you will, if you want to go that route, you really just need to watch it if you want to find out about it. But So that was one of them, that was the second movie. The first one was called Tammy and the T-Rex, which we saw at the last Tell you right, horror show. Um, at least I think that's where we saw it. Can't fucking remember. Um, so in twenty nineteen, and uh, it came out in nineteen ninety three, nineteen ninety four, and went nowhere. It got chopped up and turned into a slightly different movie for PG thirteen rating, and nobody saw it again until the original print was relocated or found, I guess, uh, just a couple years ago. And then released. And it's, uh, it's, I don't know. 
I want to say I don't like it if I'm thinking about it in comparison with, you know, the traditional good movies. It's not really a horror movie per se, other than the gore. And I'm sure the gore was taken out in the PG-13 movie because the gore is ridiculous in the R-rated version. Um, in the PG-13, I think that's actually called Tanny with an N. Tanny and the Teenage T-Rex, which is an even dumber name than just Tammy and the T-Rex. Uh, there's some backstory behind that I'm not going to get into, but it was Denise Richards' first movie. If you're familiar with the works of Denise Richards from Starship Troopers and Wild Things and Charlie Sheen's Tiger Blood, she's a beautiful girl. Uh, It was her first movie. For those of you who are fans of the Fast and Furious franchise, your boy Paul Walker's first movie, and he is delightfully awful in it. Um, He's actually really not awful, but when when you look at it all together, he's not bad. Uh, as a, as a collective, it's hysterically bad. Like the same guy who made ice pirates made that. And, uh, if uh, you've seen ice pirates, then at least you'll kind of have a feeling for what you might get if you watch it. But it's, uh, definitely got its funny fucking moments. They knew they were making a bad movie and, uh, they did a good job at making a bad movie. I'll give them that. So if you do see Tammy and the T-Rex anywhere, And I think it's on Shudder right now. Um, Just give it a spin. Give it a watch. Like, you'll probably wonder why you're watching it after about 10 minutes. So, just keep that in mind. Um, Yeah, Denise Richards, Paul Walker. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. I'm sorry your boy got you killed. Whatever. And speaking of Paul Walker, if you haven't seen... He's done a couple of um, very intense movies like uh like a joyride joyride i liked joyride a lot that movie was awesome um it really inspired me to i really should buy a cb radio and candy cane and just fucking creep people out um joyride was pretty intense pretty good i liked it a lot actually the fast and furious movies are i really don't care for these newer ones very much i mean they're they're fun but really I don't like them. I don't care if I ever see them. I really did enjoy the first Fast and Furious. Um, I thought that one was was good. And uh, the second one I didn't hate. Uh, third one I don't think I've seen yet. I've seen the other ones though. Um, most of them. I didn't see the last one. Uh, anyway, but he was also in a movie called Running Scared. And I want to say that came out in 2007 or eight, Somewhere around there. And Running Scared... Uh, that's got to be my favorite Paul Walker movie. He He's the lead role, obviously, because he's dreamy. Um, he's the lead role, but it's the first time I saw it, I was literally sitting on the edge of my sofa. It was so fucking intense. Um, if you like crazy intense movies, I highly, highly recommend Running Scared. Um, it's got... Uh, Vera Farma, Farmiga, Farmiga, Vera Farmiga. She's the older of the Farmiga sisters. She's in like the Conjuring movies now. Um, she's in it. Uh, I hadn't seen anything with her before that. Um, but it, it's just fucking intense. So highly recommend looking for Running Scared. I don't know if it's out on any of the streaming platforms. Uh, but if you see it and you're looking for uh, keep you on the edge of your seat movie, fucking watch it. If you're looking for a horror movie, it's not really a horror movie. It's more of an action thriller. Um, you should still just watch it. That's my opinion of the movie. It's fucking great. Watch it. So anyway, that's that's what I've done with my life the last couple of weeks. Um, I know I have a lot of people listening to this now. Uh, maybe not necessarily the rest of these episodes, but uh, after I interviewed Greg Burgess of A Legion and the Nuclear Power Trio... Uh, that's my most popular episode so far, and that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, he's got a large following, a large fan base, and, uh, you know, he's pimped it out a few times. So, Greg, I love you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's basically me in a nutshell. I got to hang out with some friends and, uh, you know, we did it safely. And the idea for me about safety is, you know, if, if you have any kind of weirdness going on, 
in your in your day. So let's say you you do decide you're going to plan something with your friends and something comes up, you wake up and now you have a crazy sore throat or a cough or something is physically off. You know, call it off. You know, don't risk it cuz let's say you do have it and you're just starting to get symptoms, you know, the last thing you need to do is go give them to anybody else. And you know, just think of it that way, hand sanitize, wash your hands. Wear your fucking mask when you're out in public. Just do what you can. But, you know, if you need to get out and see your people, I think you should try to get out and see your people. Just, you know, do what you need to do to make sure that seeing them is not a total fucking abomination to public health. So that's my opinion. That's my thoughts on that. And speaking of which, I just found out that for work, um, we'd been doing planning for a bunch of training. That was supposed to be remote, and we just got the word in the middle of a meeting where we're talking about how we're going to deliver this remote training. Oh, that they want it to be in person, so I'll be traveling a bunch in March, um, which might put a a damper on the socializing, which is fine. Like, you know, I'm happy to be traveling again, and it'll be the same places, so uh, if I'm exposed, then it is what it is, but... Uh, traveling, traveling during all this is definitely weird. If you haven't done so, it's just a, it's just a weird, weird vibe. The things that, uh, they ask you to do and when they ask you to do them versus when they don't. So if you're traveling, if you've experienced travel, you know, especially by airplane, uh, let me know, let me know your think your, what you think about things. Like it's, it's picking back up. That's for fucking sure. It's definitely picking back up. And I think now with people getting the vaccines, um, it's probably going to start picking back up a lot. And hopefully everybody reacts relatively okay to the vaccine. So time will tell. Anyway, I mentioned we're going to do a contest. So first, it's time for a commercial brought to you by me. Sort of. So you've been listening to me ramble on for quite some time about this, that, and the other. So allow me to ramble on, briefly, about how I operate this podcast. There's lots of options for how you want to post and host your podcast and put it out into the world. Uh, I did a lot of research on mine, and for me, I decided to go with Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. That was a big selling point to me. Free is good. Uh, I like free. There's also tools for creation to help you record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer, or your tablet, or whatever you're using. I find that to be effective. So we got free, we got uh, recording and editing, both big deals, uh, because they are. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, it can be heard on Google Podcasts, and many, many more. That is a huge time saver because I don't have to go to each of those things to upload. So I like that distribution right then and there. And again, it's free. You can make money from your podcast, if you're into that kind of thing, with no minimum listenership. That could be cool. I think you should try it. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you've been on the fence about making a podcast and the only thing holding you back is how you want to host it or create it or whatever, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's worth it. So, I mentioned that this is episode number 10 of the Death Metal Disco Podcast. And as a thank you to my listeners and people who pay attention to the podcast, I decided I am going to have a giveaway on the contest. And the giveaway is going to be for a gift card in the amount of 25 American dollars. And, you know, maybe maybe that's not a lot to you. But it's probably $25 that you didn't have before. And uh, as a thank you, I'm just going to give somebody $25. And here are the details about the giveaway, which will begin uh, Monday, February 15th. When this episode drops, you will see it. And I'll post this shit. I'll post these rules on the social media um, so you can see them and refer refer back to them should you need to. Um, Pretty standard rules about, you know, how to actually do it. So here we go. The giveaway prize is a $25 gift card to any retailer or restaurant the winner chooses. 
so long as the podcast host is physically able to purchase it and send it physically or electronically to the winner. I am the podcast host, so I need to be able to buy the fucking thing either online and send it via email uh, or mail it to you. So uh, that's how it's going to go down. If you are outside of the U.S., it's got to be something I could probably email you if you're not in at least North America uh, because I'm not going to pay a butt ton of money to send a $25 gift card that you probably can't use in fucking Japan anyway uh, versus sending you something via email. So that's the first thing to know. The contest is only valid to residents of countries where giveaway contests are legal. I will check. Not that I'm expecting to get a ton of entries or anything, and I'm definitely not expecting to get entries from people in countries that can't do contests like this. But that's just something I'm going to check to make sure I'm not going to be in trouble if I do it. You must like or follow or subscribe to any form of the Death Metal Disco podcast social media. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Preferably Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Um, And if I'm honest, preferably Twitter or Instagram. uh, Strictly just because those are easier for me to check. To actually enter the contest, you need to simply comment on a post or message the podcast or tweet. So if you're on Twitter, you're going to tweet. So if you're on Twitter and you want to enter the contest, just tweet or send a message if you want to. But tweeting, you know, tweet the Death Metal Disco Podcast channel at Death Disco Pod. Uh, your favorite bit or your favorite uh, segment of something on an episode of the podcast so far. So anything from episode one to this episode, which is episode 10. If you have a clip or a segment of anything in any of those episodes that you really liked, just send me a tweet or a message and use the hashtag if you're doing a tweet or anything public like Instagram. Uh, use the hashtag Death Metal Disco Giveaway. Death Metal Disco Giveaway will be the hashtag that I will be using to find these things. Um, not that I'm expecting a shit ton of entries or anything, but that's how I'm going to track them. And that's really all you need to do. Just one one post, one message, one tweet about the Death Metal Disco podcast with your favorite section of any bit of any episode. Um, and that will get you an entry. That's all you need to do. You don't need to buy anything. Um, you don't need to share it. I'm not going to keep track of any of that shit. It's going to be pretty simple. It's going to run for two weeks. The odds are completely dependent on the number of entries that I actually receive. And the entry dates are from February 15th when this po- when this episode goes live. Uh, Monday, February 15th at 6 a.m. Mountain Standard Time until February 28th, 2021 at midnight Mountain Standard Time. Uh, so comments for the next two weeks, essentially. Comments tweets, post replies, any of that shit, uh, with the, that all cri- all that criteria and the hashtag death metal disco giveaway, those will be entered. What I'll do is I'll take all those, make sure there's not any bullshit spam posts and comments and blah, 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 put them into a random wheel generator thing, spin that wheel, fucking pick a winner. And from there, I'll figure out if that winner is real and if they want their prize and what they want before we announce it. So the contest is going to end the 28th. I will do the selection on the 1st of March, Monday the 1st, and I will announce it probably the next day, depending on how quickly I can get a hold of whoever the winning comment was. So if uh, if I find a winner on the 1st, contact them on the 2nd. We're good to go. The 3rd, I will announce it, but it will be that same week, undoubtedly. If the winner that is selected either chooses not to actually take the gift or if uh, it turns out to be the winner is a bot or some shit because I get a lot of messages from those um yeah we'll go to a second drawing find a real human to win so that's how it's going to go down pretty standard again no purchase necessary it doesn't matter if you share or if you decide you're going to go like and follow and subscribe to all of the social medias that's not going to increase your odds um commenting a whole bunch of times uh, from different accounts, I'm not going to be able to verify um, that that you're like doing more than one entry or anything. So, I mean, really, sorry guys, I'm not, it's just me, just a one-man show doing the thing here. Uh, but yeah, that's how I'm going to do this contest. Again, it's a $25 gift card to any retailer or restaurant that you choose, should you be the winner. Um, just a thank you, a round of applause. If 
fireworks. And cheers. And thanks for listening. I love you all. Uh, that's it for now. Be safe. I will talk to you soon.